Hello there. Welcome again to another edition of Family Worship Night. Thank you for taking the time to stop by, pray a little, learn something from God's Word, and worship our King, Jesus Christ. You know, a little earlier today, I took some time off to go meet a couple friends for lunch. As I grabbed for my jacket, I had two of them laying over a chair together, and I was trying to decide which one to wear. One was a heavier winter coat, and the other one was lighter. Well, I remembered listening to the news report in the morning that was saying it was going to be a little warmer today, so I picked up the light jacket. Good thing I did. As I grabbed it and put it on, I realized that I had my car key in the pocket. If I would have grabbed the other jacket, I probably would have spent the next hour looking for my car keys. Now, that was just a little piece of luck to find the keys there. However, I listened to the weather report most mornings to see what I might need to wear. Do I need short sleeves or a sweater, raincoat or winter jacket? Are shoes okay or do I need my boots? By listening to the report, I know what I need. Today we're going to talk about listening to God for His guidance in our life. So grab your family and your Bible as we celebrate the arrival of our King and Savior, for Jesus Christ is born. During this Christmas season, I've been drawing ideas for Family Worship Night from the song, Do You Hear What I Hear? First, we ask the question, Do You Hear? Next, we ask, Do You See? Last week was, Do You Know? And today, we come to the last verse in that song. It says, Said the King to the people everywhere, Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Jesus, our King, wants to guide our lives, but do we listen? The other day I asked my wife a question, but I was doing a couple of things at the same time, so even though she answered my question, I didn't hear what she said. To be more precise, I did hear, I didn't listen. <laughs> I had to go to her later and admit that I didn't listen to the answer to the question that I had asked. The scripture writer James said, be quick to listen and slow to speak. That's great advice in all relationships, for spouses, for friends, for church members. But it's also great advice, especially with God. Jesus is our King. He is our Lord. He should have complete rule and reign over our lives. But that would require that we listen. Do you listen? We will look at this closer in a moment. But first, let's pray, and then we'll have this week's song. Our Father, we honor you and give you glory this day. We thank you for your love and your grace and your care and your watch over us. Open our hearts today. Help us to listen as you would guide us and as you would lead. Draw us closer this Christmas season that we might worship you all the more. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar field and fountain moor and mountain following yonder star oh star of wonder star of night star with royal beauty bright westward leading still proceeding guide us to thy birth Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward. Proceeding, guide us to thy perfect life. Break incense to offer have I, incense old a deity die. Prayer and praising, all men raising, worship him God most high. Oh, star of wonder, star of bright. 
star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect love. Welcome back. I found that most people today say that they believe in God. In fact, in 20, uh, 2017, there was a Gallup poll that revealed that 87% of our country believe, say that they believe in God. You know, but as you look around the country today, does that seem to ring true to you? Does it seem like we as a people are seeking after, listening to, and honoring God with our lives? You know, look at our culture. Look at our priorities. Look at what people do, how they talk, how they live. It's easy to say that you're seeking God, but Jesus said there's actually a way to tell. There's a test, if you will. Jesus was talking to a crowd of people one day, and in John chapter 6, verse 45, he says, It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. In other words, Jesus said that God declared long ago by the prophets that those who seek God will find Jesus. Everyone who has truly listened and learned from God will come to Jesus for guidance and instruction and as an example of how we should live. Like the song said, said the king to the people everywhere, listen to what I say. Let's read a story from Luke chapter 2. After telling of Jesus' birth, the story of Jesus takes a little leap forward in the narrative of his life. The beginning of the chapter is the birth of Jesus, but then the end of the chapter, it simply says that he grew up in strength and wisdom. Then the story picks up again in verse 41, where, when Jesus is a young man at the age of 12. Let's pick up our reading there in Luke chapter 2, verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to according to their custom. And when the feast was ended, they were returning, and the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't know it. But supposing him to be with the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. And all who had heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why are you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they and they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. You know, this story is hard to imagine when you consider it from the perspective of Mary and Joseph. After the festival, they leave Jerusalem and walk for a day's travel, thinking that Jesus was with other members of the family. When they realize that he is actually missing, they have to go all the way back to Jerusalem to look for him. Then, for the next three days, they are looking. I can just imagine them frantically going from house to house, checking every market, asking everyone they met, Have you seen our boy? Have you seen our boy? He'd been missing for four to five days by now. You know, my wife and I lost our son at Disneyland once. It was only for five minutes, but those were the worst five minutes of our life. No wonder Mary scolded him. Your father and I have been searching for you in great distress, she said. Well, that's Bible speak for, we've been going out of our minds looking for you. You know, Jesus answered, why were you worried? Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I would be here in my father's house? You know, there seems to be confusion around the exact words that Jesus used here. Some translations say, doing my father's business, others my father's affairs, and others still say uh, doing the things of my father. Anyway it is, Jesus was not being disrespectful to his parents. That would be a sin. And verse 51 said that Jesus continued to be subject to them. So there was no disrespect here in his reply. I would imagine that he decided the best way for them to find him would to be to wait in the temple 
Perhaps that was the last place they were together. Or at least it was a good meeting point when they came back. But for five days, the parents searched everywhere else. Where would you normally look for a missing 12-year-old boy? Well, maybe they would be looking out where other boys might be playing. Or maybe they went to the market to see if he was asking people to feed him. Or maybe he was some, they might have thought he was somewhere throwing little rocks at girls. But not Jesus. He only wanted to learn. He only wanted to please God. He only wanted to do his Father's work. He only wanted to listen to God. Do you listen? Proverbs 8.33 says, Listen to my instructions and be wise, and do not ignore it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. I want to leave you with a couple of questions that you can discuss at home before finishing up your own time of worship. First, did Jesus have to learn the scriptures like we do? What do you think about that? What was it like for him growing up? Second, what was Jesus disrespectful to his parents? What do you think about his answer? Why don't you talk about those two questions for a moment before finishing up your own time of worship, and then you can pray together before finishing out your time. But for now, that's it. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this time together. Family Worship Night will happen again next week. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to receive reminders every time we add a new video. If you found this video helpful, consider sharing it on your own social media page and encourage others to join us for Family Worship Night. We'll see you again next week.